So, welcome back. We have started looking at default reasoning and as we said default reasoning is a mechanism we want to deploy in a world where there is a fair amount of uncertainty that you do not have complete knowledge and yet you want to make inferences essentially. So, one of the simplest approaches to that is the closed world approach to reasoning which says that assume that whatever you know is what is there to know. This is called a closed world assumption that unless an atomic sentence P is known to be true, it can be assumed to be false essentially. So, this is like negation by failure that we saw when we were looking at prologue uh, except that this applies only to atomic sentences. So, what we want to do is to augment our knowledge base by saying that these propositions are not true. So, if you are going to be working with a finite set of predicates, then we can augment the knowledge base as follows that in construct a new knowledge base k b plus to take the old knowledge base k b and add to that all sentences of the form not p, where p is an atomic sentence and the knowledge base does not entail p essentially. Having done so, then we can employ the standard entailment processes. We can treat the knowledge base as if it is just a set of sentences in logic and make whatever inferences we can. So, this is the process of making inferences that we are using. So, remember that when we say entailment, we normally mean a proof process or something similar or model checking as we have seen. Uh, and we will not distinguish too much between entailment and derivation at this stage. So, if we can do that, then we say that the original knowledge base, which was the not augmented knowledge base, we can infer alpha in the original knowledge base, but with a new form of entailment, which is entailment under the closed world assumption. Now, one consequence of doing this is that inference is no longer local essentially. In proportional logic and in first order logic, making inferences is a local process. What do we mean by that? That the consequent depends only upon the antecedents and you do, if the antecedents are known to be true, then the consequent can be added to the knowledge base or the consequent is known to be true. Of course, one has to search for those antecedents. For example, if you are doing uh, forward chaining, then you would try all possible antecedents to see whether you are going towards the consequent and backward chaining, you will move backward from the goal searching for its uh, antecedents, but that does not affect the correctness of the inference. Logically speaking, once the antecedents are there, the conclusion follows and it follows only from the antecedents. In default logic, because we have to show that the knowledge base does not entail a proposition P for all atomic sentences, this requires to explore all avenues to prove P, which means you have to look at the entire knowledge base. So, it is no longer a local process. So, in a scenario where more sentences are added to the knowledge base, this becomes a non-local process in the sense that the correctness of the inference requires one to inspect the entire knowledge base. This is true of other forms of reasoning also. So, probabilistic reasoning for example, also tends to look at the entire knowledge base because that is where the numbers come from. So, at least we would have to look at the rules that are involved with the fact P. So, how do we do this, this thing? An extension or an extent is an explicit enumeration of a predicate instance. So, for example, if your domain has 4 numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, then the relations shown here or pairs shown here is an extension of a relation 
and that relation if we had written in the intentional form we would have written that it is a set of all pairs x y such that x is less than y. So, when we write the second form then we are using kind of sentences in first order logic exploiting the power of first order logic, but if we write the extensions then we are stating all the facts individually and explicitly. What the closed world as inference process does is to minimize the extension of all atomic predicates. So, when we say minimize this, we say that we only keep those things which we know to be true or which can be inferred to be true and we throw away everything else. So, in some sense the extension is as small as possible. Only those instances that are in the KB or entailed by the KB are assumed to be true essentially and we have seen this process that we add all those not of P which are not entailed by the KB. This can cause some problems uh, in some knowledge bases, especially if a knowledge base has a disjunctive statement. So, we have seen that disjunction is often a problem. One of the reasons we benefited from using horn clauses is that they do not allow disjunctions. This thing. So, an A and B and C and D can imply only E or something like that. It cannot imply E or F essentially. So, disjunctions can often be a problem and it is the case here as well. So, just consider a simple knowledge base which says P or Q. For example, Tweety can fly or Peppy can fly. So, we know that one of them at least can fly, maybe both can fly as well. But when we use the closed world assumption, we augment the knowledge base with not P and not Q because we cannot show that not P is true and not P or Q is true, but once having done that we find that our knowledge base has become inconsistent because as we have seen earlier as well this set of clauses is unsatisfiable you can derive the null clause so which means that they are unsatisfiable. So, an approach to get around this problem is called generalized closed world assumption. And the idea we hear is that not to minimize the extension of all atomic predicates indiscriminately. And this in particular will apply to those atomic predicates or atoms which occur in disjunctions. An atomic predicate in a disjunction is minimized only if there is evidence that the disjunction will survive in the sense that the knowledge base will not become inconsistent. So, the approach used here is to again augment the knowledge base. So, we start with the knowledge base and augment it with, with something else and also we augment it with all those negations of atomic sentences for all such that for all collections of q 1 to q n if we have a disjunction in involving P, remember that is where we are facing a problem. Then if we have a disjunction of the remaining literals without P, that is also true, then we can afford to say that not P is true and we will add not P to the knowledge base. So, this is called generalized closed world assumption. So, for example, if in our knowledge base we say that Tweety or Peppy can fly and we can also say that Tweety or Peppy or Chirpy can fly, then we can add not flies Chirpy to the knowledge base because we know that one of Tweety and Peppy can fly. So, our disjunction should not become false that is the goal behind um, generalized close world assumption and that is what I meant by saying that the disjunction will survive essentially. So, as you can see generalized closed world assumption is less strict than closed world assumption. Uh, it does not add everything that it cannot show, every atomic predicate not of P that it cannot show to be true to the, to the, to the knowledge base, uh, but it tries to maintain consistency and basically it says that if you have P or Q, do not add not P and not Q at the same time.
Another problem with the closed world assumption is that it is not so easy to handle quantified statements uh, both in closed world assumption and in generalized closed world assumptions. This is because you there may be individuals which are not named in the knowledge base essentially. So, you do not know whether the predicates which apply to those indi uh, to the individuals which are not named how to say that they are not true for example. So, if you have a knowledge base which talks about the four numbers 1, 2, 3, 4 somewhere in the knowledge base, how do we decide that th this sentence that for all x, x is less than 11 or there exists an x such that x is greater than 11 is true or not because we do not know what are the individuals in the domain essentially. But if we assume that we know that the only individuals are in the domain are the ones that we have stated explicitly and this is the uh, spirit of uh, the closed world assumption that the only individuals in the domain are those explicitly mentioned in the domain then we can of course make a statement. So, this is called the knowledge base extension. So, we are extending kb plus with the domain closure axioms or domain closure statements and this statement says that for all x either x equal to not either x equal to 1 or x equal to 2 or x equal to 3 or x equal to 4 is true essentially. Of course, it will turn out to be either or also in this case. There are still some problems which linger even if we apply domain closure and to illustrate that let us look at this knowledge base. It has some it has two predicates p is a unary predicate and r is a binary predicate and there is one individual that we are talking about and that is c here and we have said that c is a p. We have also said that for every x not r x x is true. So, which must be true for C as well. And we have also said that for every x, if P x is true, then there exists a y such that R x y is true and y is also a P essentially. Now, this knowledge base with domain closure that the only individual is c that for all x x equal to c and that is the only option you have is inconsistent because r c c must be false because we have a statement that for every x not of r x x is true, but there must also be an individual k which is not equal to c because we want r c k to be true. And k cannot be c because we know that rxx is false. So, k has to be different from c in the domain such that the variable y maps on to maps to such that rck is true, but the domain closure says that c is the only individual. So, you can see that we have some lingering problems here essentially. So, in the next session we will look at a very well known algorithm for default reasoning called circumscription.